Fantastic. Good morning, everybody. My name is uh, Shahid Azim. Uh, I lead a little company based in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, we're focused on quantifying brain health um, and basically leading a small team of data scientists and neurologists out of uh, MGH. So brain health fundamentally um, is, uh, is extremely complicated and um, extremely devastating for families uh, and hugely uh, significant cost implications both for society and the system. Uh, our mission is to sort of help change that. And the way we do that is by detecting disease states before uh, people become symptomatic. Our vision is to use digital biomarkers, and we've seen that strategy work in other clinical conditions. Uh, Framingham study uh, basically uh, brought a wide uh, assessment and understanding of things like blood pressure and uh, cholesterol, uh, and really moved the needle on how we think about uh, heart health. We think that there's an opportunity to do something really clinically valid and clinically relevant for brain health in a similar way. And so the fundamental problem that we're trying to solve is that brain health is reactive. People, and, and also from a pharma standpoint, we've also seen a, sort of a shift towards uh, finding some of these disease states earlier. And so we think that there's a real opportunity to make a significant impact um, in this space. Both uh, from a scale standpoint, um, it's about 2x lifetime cost to manage brain health over diseases uh, like heart disease and, and cancer. And so the real opportunity, the way we think about the world is that uh, currently there aren't any tools that can measure these micro changes in our neurology and our brain function uh, in a very scalable, accessible way. And so there's plenty of publications out there to substantiate that these micro changes are happening well in advance, four, five, 10, 15 years in advance. And so can we build a platform that can listen to some of these micro changes and, and risk stratify patients at, at, a, at, a, at, a, at scale? And so our approach is really focused on two uh, initial primary sensors. Uh, we look at um, uh, eye movement using cameras and we know that at least 50% of the brain's pathways are involved in vision uh, and eye movement. And so really providing a very objective pathway to assess brain function. The other aspect, the other signal that we're looking at is uh, voice. Uh, voice, uh, uh, this is actually uh, one of our colleagues' uh, paper was published last year, uh, got a fair bit of traction. Uh, she did this as part of her PhD at MIT. Uh, where she looked at the Framingham Studies uh, 7,000 voice recordings over the last 14 years and showed uh, about 96% uh, predictability from some of the biomarkers that she was looking at um, in voice recordings to show neurocognitive decline uh, years in advance. And so we're using some of, uh, some of that effort, and actually that, that uh, specific paper was picked up by uh, Gates Notes last year in which he made a very significant... Uh, uh, essentially uh, a use, uh, sort of a case for early detection of some of these conditions. So our approach is uh, building this software layer. Uh, it's a multimodal approach, as I said. It's very flexible. It can be deployed in a VR system, uh, uh, sort of voice-enabled um, assistance, uh, smartphone, tablets. And we, what we've done is we've looked at the published literature in neuroscience over the last four decades, and we've created a list of about 120 uh, uh, digital exams, we call them, uh, to create the signal of interest. And the signal of interest can range for a long tail of clinical use cases. So on one side, we've got cognition, which is uh, um, a series of um, uh, experiences and um, uh, algorithms. And, and on the other end, which is, we've got more chronic applications like Parkinson and Alzheimer's. Uh, and most of these take anywhere from three to 10 minutes, depending on the use case. So from a regulatory standpoint, um, our first product is a, is a class one exempt, which is a digital neurocog assessment. And subsequent applications will be class two software as a medical device platform. So that's our product. We've been out in the field collecting a lot of data over the last six months. 
Um, we're using a VR system to uh, run through these digital exams. Um, the data is wirelessly presented in an iPad uh, format and, um, and be able to show sort of progress over time. Um, so far, just in the last three months, we've gone through about just under 300 patients. Um, and it's, this data collection is growing quite rapidly through a number of collaborations that we have. So just in terms of uh, market opportunity, we, uh, we see the tremendous potential in some of the more clinical applications, but the near-term focus for us is building our digital neurocog uh, platform. And we've identified two, uh, two specific markets. One is in senior living. It represents about 2 million residents in the US. And the second one is uh, Medicare Advantage. And we have a clinical partner where we're rolling out our digital neurocog assessments. And last year, they did about a million assessments. Um, these are risk assessments um, where uh, they were essentially going out there, risk stratifying patient populations, and fundamentally not doing anything about neurocognitive um, uh, health. And so we see a tremendous opportunity there to do something very effective. And the other thing that's unique about what we're doing is if you look at all the other platforms out there, they're typically digitizing existing protocols. Um, and so we see ourselves as the next evolution in that platform where we're actually building these uh, digital biomarkers based on actual physiological changes. So just in terms of just very quickly how we make money, uh, we've got sort of existing CPT codes where um, the service offering would be plugged into uh, a, a existing protocols. And then uh, we have a subscription model uh, for the senior living facilities. And we've got uh, uh, a number of pilots and a few companies on the wait list for our, uh, for our offering there. So few people have helped us uh, get here in terms of our validation. We work with the uh, MGH Sports Clinic, uh, Spalding, um, and a few other sites. Um, actually, I should probably mention, Boston Children's is an investor in our company as well. So in terms of uh, just the scientific co-founders here, uh, Rudy Tanzi is the vice chair of neurology at MGH. He's also, he was the first guy who discovered the first four genes in Alzheimer's about two decades ago. And, uh, it's been at the pioneer uh, in brain health and leads uh, Henry McCann Center uh, at MGH. And um, we, uh, a lot of the work that uh, Sean did during the DARPA brain initiative at MGH uh, is are fundamentally the techniques that we're using to optimize the signal of interest um, in, a, in a digital environment. So we put a team together. It's a, a combination of a PhDs, uh, uh, MDs, uh, MBAs. Um, and we're sort of going out there, uh, uh, making it happen. And uh, over the last uh, year, we've also pulled together a small group of advisors that are actively supporting and guiding us. Um, so what is our ask? We've raised a million over the last uh, uh, year. And uh, we've been pretty capital efficient uh, in building our team and building our sort of uh, MVP. Uh, we're in the process of uh, closing our uh, seed round now and looking for strategics and other investors to be part of the syndicate. Uh, we uh, also are projecting a sales, um, sort of uh, about half a million dollars this year, uh, based on our existing pipeline of conversations that we're, uh, we're in the process of converting into uh, uh, from pilots to sales agreements. So that's it for me. If you have any other questions about some of our work and the validation that we've done to date, uh, I'll be out there in the break room and happy to meet you. Thanks.